Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. In the name of Allah, most gracious, most merciful, all praise and thanks are due to Allah. My friends, today I'm going to talk to you about such a lady whose life is an example for today's people too. And after knowing whom, you, can all, uh, you cannot say that Islam does not give freedom to women. My friends, her name is Al-Shifa bint Abdullah, the first female teacher in Islam. Al-Shifa bint Abdullah was born in Mecca. Her real name was Laila. But she was called Al-Shifa from her profession as a medicine woman. Al-Shifa means the healer by God's permissions and indicates that she practiced folk medicines. My friend, she was the daughter of Abdullah ibn Ab Shams and Fatima bin Wahab. She was extremely intelligent and wise woman. Very few pupils were literate in pre-Islamic Mecca, but she was one of them. My friend, she was one of the wise women of her, her time, literate in an illiterate age. At a time when barely 20 pupils in Mecca could write, Al-Shifa bint Abdullah was the first woman to acquire this skill. My friend Al-Shifa was a woman of intelligence and was highly respected for her learning and wisdom. Very few women of her times learn to read and write. This is not, a struck, uh, this is not surprising as the Arabs were mostly unliterate in the society of pre-Islamic Arabia, which treated women as inferior. My friend Al-Shifa was a skill and, the, and she taught other. In fact, the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, asked her to teach Hafsa bint Umar Razallahu Anha. The Prophet Muhammad وسلم, also asked her to teach Hafsa how to treat a skin illness because Al Shifa was adept in certain aspects of medical treatment. My friends, medicine was still an under, underdeveloped discipline and Al-Shifa was in what was known at that time. My friends, this shows how apt her name was Shifa means cure and full recovery after illness. Al-Shifa bint Abdullah was also healer. She was particularly skilled in the art of Ruqayya or spiritual healing. In Medina, Al-Shifa practiced and taught others medicine. When she adopted Islam, she asked the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, if she could continue, and he encouraged her to do so. This shows how the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, always encouraged learning and how the new Muslims were always keen to establish whether their old way and practice were consistent with Islam. My friend Sal Shifa was married to a man known as Abu Uthman ibn uh, Hudaya, and she gave him two sons, one called Suleiman, who grew up to be very religious and a man of good reputations. Al-Shifa embraced Islam before the Hijrah and was one of the earliest to migrate from Mecca to Medina. Al-Shifa bin Abdullah embraced Islam early on and struggled with the rest of the Muslim under persecutions in Mecca. Persecution in Mecca. My friend Sal Shifa would ask the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, some questions of religions. As she also attained the marks, she became a good scholar in her own right. Al Shifa bin Abdullah was many things. She is said to be the first woman in Islam who was teacher because she was literate. 
She taught many other pupils how to read and write. Nobly, she taught Hafsa bint Umar Razallah Ta'ala Anha, a wife of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. As the Medina society developed, Al Shifa became the public administrator when Umar Razallah Ta'ala Anha was Khalifa. He felt that it was important that supervision should be provided in the marketplace where people buy and sell. He adopted, appointed Al Shifa as the market controller in Medina. Her duties were to ensure that business practices should always be consistent with Islam, possibly the first Muslim woman to hold office. My friend, she would go around the market making sure that no cheating or tricks took place and that buyer and seller conform to Islamic values. She was in charge of marketing, sure that all business practices match with the ruling teachings and values of Islam. She also known to have advice Khalifa Umar Razallah Ta'ala Anha on many occasions about numerous different things. He always took her very seriously. My friend Umar Razallah Ta'ala Anha told shopkeepers that if they were in doubt about the legality of a particular transaction, then they should ask Al Shifa. He trusted her knowledge of Islam. Umar Azzallah Ta'ala and has respect for Al Shifa's competence, characters, and judgment led him to appoint her as an officer or wali in administration, administration of the marketplace. My friends, the appointment of Al Shifa was highly successful. Therefore, when Umar Azzallah Ta'ala Anha felt that it was advantageous, to have market controller, he appointed one in Makkah as well. Umar Razallah Ta'ala Anha appointed a woman, Samra bint Nuhayk, as a market controller in Makkah. My friends, due to her vast knowledge of Islam, Al Shifa was an advisor to Khalifa Umar Razallah Ta'ala Anha. She is admired for her work in health, education, and politics. My friends, why is Al Shifa bint Abdullah such a good role model? She was a truly incredible woman, playing a part in almost every important role of society. Teachers are the foundations of society. Without teacher, there are no other occupations. Al Shifa bint Abdullah's teaching was valuable. Medicine is one of the most difficult practice it is today, and it always has been. However, Al Shifa not only healed, she healed in the best way. My friend Al Shifa narrates good number of hadith with her forceful character, influential counsel, and multiple professional skill. The first female teacher in Islam, she was healer of the people and teaching of the women. Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam used to visit her and he sometime consulted her about best practice and business matters. My friends, may Allah reward her for her service. My friends, after knowing her life, how we can say that Islam does not entitle women to education and how can this world say that Islam does not give the woman the right to work outside. My friends, our life is a great example for today's women. Okay, my friends, see you again with some new topic. Allah Hafiz.